now we will uh, start about a very interesting topic that is python flow controls and how python loop or python code actually flows so in order in order to control the flow of a program we require certain statements okay be it java be it c++ any programming language if we talk about you need to uh, have a control over the flow of programs so we all know that python is a line by line execution language so when it is a line by line execution la language uh, there are certain instances there are certain instances where we want the flow of the program to get changed we want the flow of program to alter to some extent so it depends um, how we can alter or stop or control the flow of the program so in order to do that we will use the python flow controls so we have uh, conditional statements to control the flow of the program we have loops to control the flow of the program and then we have function calls to control the flow of the programs so uh, we will talk about the conditional operations or conditional operators here Conditional operators are uh, very interesting because it will allow us to change the mode of data or flow of data based on a condition. If you do not want to execute uh, the data or certain line of code or certain operation for a certain situation, you can use the conditional operator. It will skip that particular uh, condition and if the condition is not true, if the condition is false, it will straight away execute uh, the rest of the things if it is false. So we'll talk about the uh, first conditional statement that is the if block. The if statement is used in Python for decision making. So when we are running a Python code, when we are running a Python code, so it is necessary uh, like if there are certain instances where we will require to um, uh, change the course of action. So uh, or where we will require some kind of additional um, uh, input or some statements or something like that so there we can use the if condition condition and uh, if is followed by a condition and uh, if the condition is true the statement which is below the if condition will get executed so uh, let's talk about this if condition in python so we are moving to the conditional part so we are talking about the if condition and if condition as I told you if followed by the condition okay I will take <coughs> I will take a value of a uh, which was already is equal to 20 so right now it is throwing error so a is equal to 20 as you can see I am taking and I want to execute a code and uh, I want to see that if a is divisible by 2 okay so if I say that if a modulus 2 okay if this value is equal to 0 which means if a is divisible by 2 if it is divisible by 2 then the remainder is going to be 0 and if this left side of value if this left side value is equal to 0 and it, if this 0 compares to this 0 if both the sides are same which means the condition is true okay in our case right now the condition is true and I am putting this colons and after this colons we have to hit enter and after we hit enter we can print the number is divisible by 2 let me put the number or uh, the number I'll just put like this let me use a very simple code So number the the number a is divisible by 2 I'll just print it and we can see that it is returning some value so if a modulus 2 equal to equal to 0 which is correct and that why that's why it is executing some value okay what if I put a modulus 3 equal to 0 if I do this let's see what happens so you can see there is no output which means it will return true only if a certain condition over here after the if block or after the if statement is true so immediately whatever you are writing this condition if it is true it will return that particular value within the scope of if block now understand one thing 
unlike other programming languages python will not have uh, brackets as such to kind of um, have the scope of that particular if block so basically if this is my if block this particular space or indentation indicates that um, uh, this is the block so whatever if i'm writing so if i'm writing print print a if i'm writing something else print say um, star whatever i write, uh, write over here whatever i write within this if block so this uh, everything will get executed whenever my condition is true all of the things within this scope within this indentation will get executed if my if condition is true so as we saw that if an if block is executed the statements which are corresponding to that if block will get executed but there is a problem with if block the problem is what if i put th three over here it is not returning anything it's it simply ignores all the values of which are here okay what if i want to give a custom message after a if block condition for example if the if block is not working what is an alternative so let's try to understand the alternative if in case the if block doesn't re returns anything because the output of if block will be executed only if a value is printed if 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 that condition is true now we will talk about the next uh, block which is else block which will help us to return something even if the if block is not executed so the if else statement can be combined the else block can be combined with an if block so if an if block is not executed like if the condition in the if block is not true we can go on the else block and the else block will then execute get executed so let's try to understand the function flow of this if else block so here as we see that this is my if block and uh, i'll just copy the same values over here and if the value is uh, divisible by 3 okay then only i want it this to be uh, written over here so i'll just write over 3 and else i want it to give a statement okay print not divisible by 3 okay and i can add few more uh, statement um, like this below the existing statements and i'll just put all the values not not divisible by 3 or i'll just copy this only so number a is not divisible by <coughs> 3 now if we talk about this um, operation which is happening so if a is equal to 20 and if it is divisible by 3 it these all statements will get executed otherwise if this condition is not true the rest of the statement will get executed or the statement in the else block will get executed understand one thing else is not in contradiction to the if statement condition else is the default values which will get printed if the if condition is not true so while writing a program we have to keep in mind else will get executed if the if condition is not true it doesn't mean that it is opposite of the if condition so when i run this we get that the number 20 is not divisible by 3 and we are printing 20 here or we are printing something star something some uh, space so basically uh, the objective to understand uh, or objective of this particular code is to understand the if else block if else block is a very simple block if the condition is true things which are written inside the if block will get executed if the condition is not true whatever is there in the else block will get executed it will not matter what is there in the if block okay it doesn't matter what is there in the if block if i talk about this a modulus 3 uh, equal to so what if i put a modulus 2 equal to 0 okay and if i run this <coughs> you can see the statements which are in the if block the statements which are in the if blocks get executed you can see that number is 20 is divisible by 2 is getting executed because the uh, because the if condition is true and the else is completely ignored else is completely ignored 
okay so it will not matter what is there in the if block if block else block else block will get executed it doesn't matter what is there if this condition fails else will get executed it is not an contradictory to the uh, if block condition so this is something which we have to keep in mind all the time so we we can see the code over here the if block and else block condition so this can help us uh, write the if else statements now along with this if else uh, what if i have multiple if elif and else statement if elif and else is a combination of multiple if conditions or multiple conditions and a default statement which is at the end with the with the help of else statement so let's try to understand that also now uh, i'll talk about the if elif and else condition so right now i will just <coughs> minimize the line of code and what we are doing is i will also change the condition okay so the objective of changing a condition is so as to introduce the if elif block so what i want to do is i want to uh, suppose this is a marks given by some student okay marks given by some student or scored by some student and i will take this marks as an input from the user enter your marks okay and what i want is the user will enter his marks and i will compare it with the help of if else block okay i will compare it with the help of if else block whether this student is passed or in which category does the student lie so the condition uh, for the student to get pass is mark should be above uh, say 35 or 40 if it is above 40 he is passed we will consider his him as passed if the student is uh, if marks is uh, between 40 to say 60 we'll call it uh, we will call it or be, if the marks sorry if the marks is between 50 to 60 we will call him as second class or something okay so above 40 to 50 we will consider him as pass we'll call him as a passed only he has passed the exam if he is between 50 to 60 we will call him as a second class and if the student is scoring say above 60 to say 80 um we'll call him as first class randomly we are giving this uh, classes to the students and if anyone is above 80 we'll call him as distinction above marks is greater than 80 we'll call him as distinction class okay now uh, what we are doing here is we uh, we are taking marks as an input for a student and we compare uh, which category this mark actually lies okay so enter your marks i'll just put a custom me a message between 0 to 100 okay the student should enter anything between 0 to 100 only and now i will uh, compare uh, what kind of category this student will go into so first thing i will do is if uh, i'll start with an if block and in the if block i will write if marks greater than um, so um, we have to design it in a way that uh, in whichever category this marks lies so accordingly it will be given uh, that particular condition okay so uh, if the marks is uh, greater than uh, say 0 um, and If the marks is greater than zero, and if it is less than forty, we will call him as failed. If the marks is less than forty, we will call this learner as failed. Okay, so I'll enter say 
23 and it is saying that it is failed you are fails and retry next time so if i'm getting anything like this so it will give me um retry next time if i enter say 45 so it is not returning in anything which means uh, it is correctly working between 0 to 40 now i want to make it work for 40 to 50 so i will copy this here and only change i am doing is i am using lf so the second condition is lf and lf the marks is greater than or equal to 40 and if the marks is less than say 50 we will just uh, put a message you are passed okay and will not use retry next time we'll just put you are passed and let me test it for say 45 now it is returning me message that yeah you are passed now i want to use one more condition that is 50 to 60 so i will just copy this again and i'll paste it here and if the marks is greater than equal to 50 and marks is less than 60 i'll call it out as second class you are passed and in second class And let's run it and let me put the marks as 55 and it is saying that you are passed and in second class i will run it again i will put 45 let's see what get what i get i'm getting you are passed okay so uh, you can see how it is changing the course of action the control if i'm putting 32 it is just saying you are failed so the course of action the output that i'm getting it is continuously evolving based on whatever value that i'm putting like if i'm putting 32 it is saying that you are fail if i'm putting 45 it is saying you are passed if i'm uh, putting something above 40 uh, 45 or 50 it is saying that yeah you are passed and in second class now uh, let us uh, add it uh, add one more condition for 80 uh, like between 60 to 80 so if the marks is greater than equal to 60 and uh, marks is less than 80 we will call him has uh, in uh, second class sorry first class and if if i put just value as 80 let's see it is not returning anything because the condition for 80 is not there the condition is only for less than 80 so i will run it again and i will put 79.99 okay and now <coughs> it is just re returning it is saying that invalid literal now why it is getting invalid literal it is because 79.99 is not acceptable because the value that i'm expecting is uh, integer so i will convert it to float and I run it again and now I will put 79.99 and now it is saying that you are passed and in first class so uh, the marks that I have scored is uh, less than 80 and that's why it is in first class now we'll create a condition for distinction so as we know that anything above 80 is going to be distinction so I will just uh, write else print distinction why I'm using else because i have no other condition left in a 0 to 100 scale so if anyone is putting uh, 0 okay uh, i have to put greater than equal to 0 because anyone can also get 0 as a percentage so if i'm putting 0 so i'm getting some output so i want output from a scale of 0 to 100 so if i put 0 uh, at a 0 to 40 i'm getting failed if I'm putting 40 to 50, it is saying that, yeah, you are passed. If, it, I'm, if I'm putting 50 to 60, it is saying that you are in second class. If I'm putting um, 60 to 80, it is saying that you are in uh, first class. And if uh, I, I have not left any condition now, all the marks range have been covered till 80. So anything above uh, or beyond these all values, okay anything beyond this set of conditions will be considered as distinction which means if a value between 0 to 80 or 0 to 100 if the value is not lying in this condition so it is obvious that the value is above 80 only so if in case 
the value is greater than 80 so the distinction will be printed so i'll return i'll put 82 and it is saying distinction so the program works fine for all the condition uh, mentioned over here so as you can see we can we can we have a output in a way that uh, the program the flow of the con of program is controlled with the help of this if block we are getting a single output for the set of input that we are taking we are taking a single input we are taking getting a single output for that uh, for that particular condition okay now there is a catch if i put um, say 101 or 1000 still it will show me distinction because there is no control over marks i have just written a message enter between 0 to 100 i have written a message to enter between 0 to 100 so that's why there is no control over the input value as well so uh, we can make modification to this program so as to get values only below uh, below the value 100 okay and then only my program will get executed so we'll see this in the upcoming uh, uh, topic so we have seen this if elif uh, condition with the help of marks example here we have an example of age and uh, we are going to <coughs> uh, here in here we are giving uh, the fares or the bus fares for people based on the age so 0 to 3 they don't have to pay any uh, fare 3 to 10 uh, they have to pay the fare of 20 rupees if he is about 10 to 20 25 rupees he has to pay and then uh, the age is um, otherwise the fare is 30 for people who are not uh, kind of uh, establishing or those are the fare has to be 30 for people who are not meeting all the above FLF conditions. Now, uh, as I told you that uh, in our program that we discussed, uh, there was a problem like the program was still executing for values above 100. So, we can use nested if to solve this problem. What is a nested if uh, condition? So, nested if is a condition where I have a statements or if statement within an if statement. So, I have an outer if statement as you can see here and within the scope of my outer in statement, I have the inner in statement, if statement. So, outer if statement, if this condition is true, the inner if statement will get executed. So, we'll try to make modification to the existing program and we will use the nested if part to uh, change the course of action in our program and we will make a very solid program to uh, give a message to the students whether they have passed, failed or in the distinction category. So this is our program and the problem with this program if I run it, so it is working fine for all the conditions over here and I can use an elif block but I don't want to use an elif block for now because I want to just use else block and um, I just want to get this executed. I can use elif block and I can print a distinction and I can say that value between 0 to 80 okay but I just I can do it I'll just show you how we can do it if the condition is I'll just put this message if the marks is greater than equal to 80 and the marks is less than 100 so we get the message as distinction so now we will talk about the nested if else statement we have seen a program on that uh, conditional statement where we have used the if and elif block and in the if elif block we have seen how it was executing but even though I was putting a value above 100 uh, and it was allowing me to enter a value above 100. So even though I was entering a value above 100, it was returning me something. Okay, it was returning distinction, which is actually wrong because the percentage values cannot or the marks cannot be above 100. Okay, for a particular data or particular student. So uh, the scale was from 0 to 100. Okay, so how we can use the nested if argument or nested if statements to solve this problem we can solve it with other different methods as well but we will uh, use nested if statement uh, in order to get this executed so let us try to understand first of all the structure of a nested if statement what is a nested if statement so nested if statement is a, a structural approach of programming or loop control where we use if statement within an if statement so when i have two if statement i can definitely nest it within it so which means if the outer condition is true 
I will check for an internal condition again. And if this internal condition is true, then only the statement will get executed. I may have multiple internal conditions within my if block. Okay, so I want to first uh, uh, choose the or select the master condition. If my master condition is true, I will check for other conditions whether this particular person is qualifying or whatever whatever if condition within that if block is there. We'll see an example how exactly this works uh, with the help of the recent program that we have done. So uh, let's move to the coding part. So this was our original program where we created a program to um, find out uh, the category of a student whether he has passed, failed or in the second class or first class okay and uh, if a student is uh, as I used else here if a particular student is not meeting any of this condition okay uh, like he is not in the range of 60 to 80 or 50 to 60 or 40 to 50 or 0 to 40 in any of this range if he is not that then definitely he is above that particular value which is uh, greater than uh, 80 greater than equal to 80 which is an extension condition so uh, I will definitely run this and okay something is missing So we do not need anything in the else block, remove it and let's run it. So if I put any value say 89, so it is showing distinction. There is one more catch in this prog prog uh, program. So basically the mark should not be greater than equal to 0. But when I am entering it, it can be minus 1. I can put minus 1 also and it will say fail. Okay, or it is returning distinction. It is returning distinction even though the marks is negative. So what I will do is. I will just use one condition in the if block and if I run it again and if I put minus one now the student will be returned as a failed student because he is having negative score. So uh, now we have perfectly aligned our program but there is still a problem if I put a very higher value above say 2000 something something it is saying that distinction but the scale of mark is between 0 to 100. User may enter any value even if you are writing 0 to 100 user may enter any value he may make mistakes while entering his marks. So he will be returned like he, the value will be returned as distinction. We will modify this program with the help of if elif block. So uh, we'll make the changes over here. So in order to make the changes uh, I will use a nested if okay and I will write that if marks okay is greater than 100. Uh, if marks is less than 100 then only I want all this executions to happen and I will shift this using a shortcut towards right side to put the proper indentation now I have an if condition if marks is less than 100 then only I want this execution to happen otherwise not so I will just enter and I am entering 232 you can see there is no output because this first condition is not meeting true so it will not get executed these all lines will not get executed so what we will do is we will make a change in this first condition and we see that nothing is getting like I am not getting anything why because the output that I am entering is wrong so I will introduce an else block for this if block so this is my if block and I have nested an another if block within this if block and if my the first if block is not true I will give a message that please print I will enter please enter number between 0 to 100 okay although negative values are welcome but yeah we'll put a message 0 to 100 and I'll run it so if I'm entering say 456 it is giving please enter a number between 0 to 100 only if I enter say 67 it is giving me appropriately the correct output now this program is very solid you can make modification to improvise this zero wala problem or uh, the negative marking problem so that I will leave it to you how you can make changes to this program and uh, create a program which uh, basically aligns with the uh, 0 to 100 condition so anything if it is uh, if a user is entering between 0 to 100 it will give me the output if he is entering above 100 it will return that please enter number between 0 to 100 
and the rest of the thing the program is executing well so we can see the concept of nested list executed here because the first it will match up the first condition and if this condition is true it will then match the internal if conditions so we have seen the nested if state, uh, statements so we have seen the conditional flow of statements and in conditional flow of statements um, we have certain conditions based on that only we want the program flow to execute and these are very interesting element if you want to change the course of action based on a certain situation so that is conditional statement but we have an additional concept in uh, python that is loops which you can see loops are very powerful set of uh, programming construct or objects which helps us to do the programming in a very uh, like we can do lot of repetitive task in a faster way loops helps us to repeat the certain task and execute it multiple times and uh, this eases out the process of doing repetitive task so we'll try to understand loops so loops are used to execute a particular block of code repetitively basically it will help us to repeat a certain set of blocks of code certain set of actions certain set of commands based on certain condition the first loop that we are going to discuss is the while loop and a while loop in python is used to iterate over a block of code as long as the test expression is true the while loop keeps on executing this loop is used when the number of times to iterate is not known to a beforehand basically when we don't know how many times we want to execute okay so while loop can help us here we have a while loop syntax which we can see while the we write the word while followed by a condition okay the condition value I'll always when we are using python the condition value will always be returning true or false we have to keep it in mind that the condition should return true or false it has to be a boolean output and while this condition is true the body whatever we write in the body of while will get executed so we can see a program over here where we have a number is equal to 10 and addition is equal to 0 to initialize addition as a counter and i is equal to 1 so while the i value is less than equal to number addition is equal to addition plus 1 will get executed okay so as many times as i is less than equal to number it will keep on executing and i is equal to i plus 1 will get incremented we will see the detailed flow of this while loop in a very structured and systematic way so we are now at loops the first loop that we are going to discuss is while loop as we discuss loops are the programming constant which help us to repeat a certain set of action i will i will give you a very simple demo of while loop so while true i will print a message print yes i am executing i'm just giving a random message and i'll show you the power of while loop okay i'll just run it and it is saying that i op io pub data rate exceeded why it is showing because my kernel is hung you can see it is continuously running the kernel is continuously running because the condition i have mentioned is true while the condition is true it will keep on executing yes i am executing yes i am executing so the statement is getting executed continuously in this case i will pause my kernel i will stop my kernel i told you this is to stop you can see when i stop this kernel see how many times it has executed how many times it has executed like infinite number of times uh, the statement okay so it is an infinite loop when i'm using true okay now i will use a is equal to say i'm giving a value of a 
uh, is equal to say 100 or something okay so while a is less than say or while a is greater than 0 if i'm saying while a is greater than 0 i want to print yes i am executing and below that i will put a minus equal to 1 which means i am reducing a by 1 unit which means a will become i'll just simplify it i'll keep a is equal to a minus 1 so what will happen in this program in this loop or in this uh, line of codes first i am initializing a is equal to 100 and we know that 100 is greater than 0 so we will print yes i am executing and it will uh, reduce the value of a is equal to a minus 1 initially the value of a was how much it was 100 so a will now become 99 and then we will test the value 99 against this condition so is 99 greater than 0 so yes it is greater than 0 so it will again print yes i am executing and a is equal to a minus 1 will get executed again so a was 99 and now it will become 98 because a is getting uh, subtracted by 1 so let's try to understand and i will also print the value of a uh, i'll print the value of a yes here okay within this okay and let's try to understand so initially the value of a is 100 yes i am executing will get, get executed and a message 100 will get executed let's run it you can see initially a is equal to 100 so it will print yes i am a is uh, a is 100 which is true and it will print yes i am executing and it will return 100 then in the next block a is getting reduced by one unit so a is 99 and it will return print yes i am executing 99 and you can see it is being repeated multiple times till the a value becomes 1 so it will get executed till a becomes 1 So this is what happens when we talk about a conditional while loop, a while loop. So while loop get execu uh, executed only when this condition is true. If the condition is not true, the while loop will not get executed. So that is uh, here in a while loop. It's a very simple form of loop and very powerful for uh, getting, getting uh, or returning things when we don't know how many times I want to get these things executed. If I only know at which instances or which conditions the loop should get executed. Then we have another set of loop that is a for loop. So for loop in Python is used to iterate over the items of sequence objects like list, tuple, string and other iterable objects. For loop is very interesting because it will allow you to iterate over uh, sequential data as well and it will also allow you to iterate over set of values which are iterable in nature okay if you want to iterate from a certain value 0 to 100 if you want to iterate from a fixed set of values uh, where you have the values in a form of an iterable okay so for loop can definitely help you to iterate over it so um, I will, uh, we can see here a program where number is equal to range of 1 to 11. So if the number values is ranging from 1 to 11 and addition equal to 0 and for i in number addition is equal to addition plus i. So what we are doing is we are initializing a set of numbers from 1 to 11 which means it will take values from 1 to 10 and we are going to create an addition variable which is initially 0. And for i in number, so we are iterating from uh, for uh, values in number. So number values are starting from 0, 1 to 10. Okay. So addition is equal to addition plus i. So addition will get added with i value. So in the first iteration, i value will be 1. So 1 will get added with addition which is 0. So 1 plus 0 is 1. And then uh, in the next iteration, i becomes 2. So addition has become 1 now. And 1 plus 2 becomes 3 so it keeps on adding till uh, value all the number from 1 to 10 and at the end we are getting value as 55 so 
let's try to execute this i will use a shorter set of number to understand this in a better way so we are going to talk about for loops and what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, add up all the values from say 1 to 5 only okay and let's see what is the output adding all all data from 1 to 5 uh, using for loop so let me take a range of numbers so range let's understand what is this range function range is an inbuilt python function to create a iterable value so if i put 1 to 5 so if i use print let's see what it returns and it is a very interesting function actually it is an, a range of values 1 to 5 and i'm using print range of values 1 to 5 it is creating a range of value 1 to 5 if you want to see this it is returning range i will use list of range i'll use list of range and you will get list of range it returns values 1 2 3 and 4 so range function is used to generate a sequential data okay if i'm using range 1 to 5 it is going to return 1 to 4 only so if i want uh, till 5 i have to use here 6 so it is returning uh, 1 2 3 4 5 what if i have uh, uh, i want values 1 to 100 so i can use 1 comma 100 and it will get values 1 to 100 uh, for 100 i have to put 101 what if i want to uh, not I, I just want numbers from 1 to 100 with a gap of one unit so i can like i after one i directly want three and after three i want four five after five i want seven so i want to put a step is equal to two so when i use step is equal to two okay if i use two um, step is not going to get worked out here okay it is for some other function so uh, basically if i'm using step size is equal to two so you can see one uh, is after one we are getting three and after three we are getting five after five we are getting seven and likewise if i'm using five so you can see one six eleven and all these numbers if i started from two so accordingly it will give me all the numbers okay if i started from zero accordingly it will give me numbers 0 5 10 and 15 and likewise so the purpose of using this for loop uh, range function is to create an iterable set of values now we were talking about this uh, we have understood what is this range function range generates a set of sequential number or iterable so range is an iterable now we will uh, use the for loop so for i in range say i'm saying a uh, range uh, say I'm saying oh, 1 to 6 so um, if I'm using this and if I print i so it's see if it is returning me all the values from 1 2 3 4 5 because the range 1 to 6 generates a sequential number from 1 to 5 and if I'm using print i it is giving me i as a value so for the first iteration when this for loop starts so for loop starts with range 1 so range value if you see 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 these are the values in the first iteration it will print 1 then in the second iteration it will print 2 which is the second range value third iteration it will print 3 fourth iteration it will print 4 and 5 if you want to understand it better i will give you a star over here okay in the first iteration it prints 1 and then the in the in the first iteration 1 gets printed and star gets printed okay in the second iteration 2 gets printed and again star gets printed in the third iteration 3 gets printed and star gets printed so it keeps on printing the values accordingly based on uh, the condition or based on the range values that we are that are there in this range now we are going to create a normal or a small program to add up all the values from 1 to 5 so i will put add is equal to initially 0 and what i am going to do is i am going to print i comma a okay so i will write a message as well so i what is the i value here and what is the a value here add value here, okay so initially initially i and uh, add so add is equal to 0 
and i is equal to 1 okay initially and that's what i will do so you can see add is equal to i is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 and add is still 0 0 0 0 so what i want is i want to add one by one all the values of i to add so i will take add is equal to add plus i so what now what will happen in the first iteration add is equal to 0 so it will print add is equal to 0 and i is equal to 1 so that is fine and at the end of this first iteration you can see add is getting updated with add plus i so add value if it is 0 so 0 plus i so i value was 1 so 0 plus 1 so add value will become 1 and it keeps on happening till at the end i am adding all the values from 1 to 5 so let's run it and now we can see uh, initially i was 1 and add was 0 so i am getting uh, i as 1 and add as 0 in the next iteration add is equal to um, add plus i so add value is 0 0 plus i i is equal to 1 so add becomes 1 so add is 1 getting printed then in the next iteration i becomes 2 and add wa was 1 so uh, add was already 1 so 1 plus 2 it becomes 3 add becomes 3 now 3 plus uh, 3 we are getting add value as 6 6 plus 4 we are getting add value as 10 so it works like this so initially 1 and 0 i <coughs> initially i value as 1 add value is 0 so 0 plus 1 i am getting 1 then 1 plus 2 i am getting 3 3 plus 3 i am getting 6 6 plus 4 i am getting 10 but i am uh, at the end i am adding if i am adding all these numbers you can see 5 plus 4 which is 9 9 plus 3 which is uh, 12 and 12 plus 2 we are getting 14 and 15 the value should be the add value should be 15 because uh, we are adding the value what happens is in the last iteration it is skipping the value of add so what we will do i'll just clear it out and i will separately print the add value okay and print the add value at the end add value at end and if i print it the value of add variable is 15 at the end of this loop why it is uh, so basically what happens at the end of the loop we are printing this before the before adding a value so if we are printing it before adding a value uh, so uh, it will return only the value which is penultimate which means this value it is not returning when add is like 10 plus 5 is equal to 15 this is missing even if you see the execution of loop 0 plus 1 we can see here 1 plus 2 we can see here 3 plus 3 we can see here 6 6 plus 4 we can see here as 10 but 10 plus 5 15 we have not given the print value we are not written any print because the value of i is becoming 6 and the next execution will not happen so the add value is uh, getting updated at 15 at the end of this for loop so at the end of this for loop we are getting add value as 15 so basically the logic here is to understand the law for loop in which we keep on adding the numbers and this is how a for loop works for loop works with the help of an iterable but while loop doesn't work with the help of an iterable while loop works based on a certain condition so if you don't know how many values to iterate while loop is good and if we know that how many values or how many what is the set of values in an iterable we can go with the for loop So we have seen how this for loop works. So for loop basically works on the principle of how many values are there in this iterable. So the exit condition of for loop is very important because for loop gets exited only if the all the values inside that particular iterable is exhausted. So here in this case our iterable holds value from 1 to 5 and as we saw that the i value becomes 5 it is not going to move further because after 5 the range has exhausted we do not have any value range has only values between 1 2 3 4 5 
and that's what the stopping condition of this for loop so we'll see this uh, stopping condition and try to understand so any loops in python are uh, very important uh, because it helps us to do repetitive task and um, as as it is helping us to rep do repetitive task it is important to understand how to terminate a particular loop so exiting a loop completely uh, when a certain condition is triggered then only the loop is going to get executed and uh, if you want to skip a certain portion of this loop for example if i don't want to execute certain set of values so we, we can skip that values as well with some programming or loop control statements so we have the first loop control statement that is break the break statement ends the loop and resumes execution at the next statement so if you use the break statement it will stop the loop at that time and uh, resume at the next statement the break statement can be used for in uh, in both while loop as well as for loop so it is very specific to loops only it is used to control the uh, flow of a loop it is always used with condition so you can use the break statement with a certain set of condition if that condition is uh, met the break statement will get executed we can see the we can see the break statement execution so initially we enter the loop and if this condition is false the loop will execute uh, stop if it is true it will keep on returning certain values and if break encounters if the condition or test of this loop a break encounters it will stop the flow of the loop okay so if break is true if the condition for break is true it will stop or exit the loop otherwise it will keep on repeating the loop so we'll try to understand the break uh, statement over here with an example directly with the execution part so we have already used this uh, for loop okay so i'll use this break statement over here so i'm trying to iterate uh, a very simple for loop so for i in range of values say 1 to say 100 and what i'm trying to do is i am printing all the values if, I, if i'm not take 100 i'll take 20 or 10 let's take 10 11 values and if i print i it will return all the values from 1 to 10 but what if i want to stop the execution of the loop as soon as a number is divisible by say 7 so if i modulus 7 equal to equal to 0 i want to stop the execution of the program okay till then i want it to get printed i want it to print all those values okay so if i run this you can see it is printing all the values till a 6 it is not printing even though my range values is 1 to 11 range is returning me values 1 to 10 so if i run this range separately it actually shows me values between 1 to 11 or 1 to 10 so range is generating 1 to 10 but i am getting only 1 to 6 because of this break this break is happening whenever the number is divisible by 7 whenever the ith value is divisible by 7 it will stop the uh, flow of this program so break is used to stop the flow of a program based on a certain condition there might be instances when you are writing set of codes you want to set you want to stop the flow of a program based on a certain condition so you can use break out there now uh, we can see the example here, over here okay uh, where we have a textual information knowledge hut and for letter in text we are iterating over each and every letter in this text and if this letter is equal to h we want to stop the execution so we use a break here to stop the execution so if letter equal to equal to h we are breaking and we do not continue ahead and that's what we are getting so when we print the letter we are getting uh, the print of uh, k n o w l e g e but whenever h encounter it is not printing anything it is just stopping which means the loop is entirely stopping so this is how the break can be used even in string values now the next control statement in uh, for loops is continue continue is, uh, is a very interesting uh, kind of uh, programming or the loop control statement so this continue statement is used in python which helps us to ignore a certain value 
so if a cer certain condition happens it will not stop the execution of code like the break has done it will just skip that particular part and move forward so loop uh, when we are using break it will stop it but when we are using continue it will just skip that part and move to the next part okay let's try to see it with the help of an example so it we will use the same example here that we have used so i'll just copy this and i'll paste it here okay and i'll use continue instead of break the execution and everything remains kind of same so for i in range 1 to 11 for i in range 1 to 11 if the mod if it will the range of value is 1 to 10 and if i modulus 7 equal to 0 it will just continue which means it will skip that iteration it will move to the next let's see what happens if i run it so it is printing me 1 2 3 4 5 6 but whenever 7 comes because 7 is high uh, whenever 7 comes so 7 is divisible by 7 which is true and therefore it will skip all the iteration when the value or the number is divisible by 7 and it will uh, return the next number so it is returning 8 9 and 10 so uh, this is how a continue statement actually works uh, where we just skip it uh, particular part which we do not want and rest other uh, values in that iterable will get get executed okay so uh, say i have uh, i can use it for string as well so i have a string with certain value python is a programming language so i can use it uh, like this for the string and instead of for i in s if i say i in a range i will say i in s and if i value is equal to equal to so if i value is equal to equal to say a so i want to continue i want to remove all a from my string so for that i will just enter this and you can see all the values are there except the part where i have received a so a has been completely removed okay so when we are using um, this uh, continue it will skip certain values based on the condition that we are providing now uh, we have a another programming constant that is a pass statement so pass statement is uh, something which will uh, use which will be used as a placeholder uh, holder within loops so right uh, for example if you do not want to enter any value for a variable so we use null there or none there okay but if it is a uh, if if it happens for a loop if it if you want to make it happen for a function you want you don't want to execute certain things or you just simply want to uh, keep it blank or do not do anything in that instances you can use the pass statement so pass statement uh, like for example if you are doing something if you have a variable a and variable b and like condition a b c and d and um, say if a occurs you will you you are doing something like something will happen you know those set of actions to take when a happens you know the set of action uh, to take when b happens but you don't know what ha what to do when c happens okay and you don't you know what happens uh, what to do when d happens but uh, you know that these all are possible outcomes okay when we know that these all are possible outcomes and we at the later point of time we may be coming to know what to do at c instance so at that time we can do what we can use pass for c pass for c will do what it will just execute nothing if c occurs because we don't know what is going to happen and for a b and d it will keep on happening like it will keep on running whatever we want to run at that time so a python pass statement is used as a placeholder within loops functions classes and if statements that will be implemented later so a pass statement is a null statement that is used in cases where the loop function or class is to be ignored or written and executed if you want to return the, that thing or if you want to just ignore it you can use the pass statement okay and as the name suggests pass statement simply does nothing it is just going to do pass or it will just 
stop uh, it will not do anything in that iteration so we have an example of pass as well so uh, say i have a list here with certain values and if the numbers are divisible by 2 i just don't want to do anything i will use pass here and pass will simply skip that particular set of iteration where the condition has been true so here if uh, i have certain set of number 13633 and certain values here and i am iterating over all these numbers so for i in num which means i will be each and every value in this num and if i modulus 2 equal to equal to 0 which means if the number that is there is going to be even i just want to pass and pass will do nothing and i can use the else statement to print uh, the value so else means if the condition is not uh, true else will get printed so here pass is getting executed which means it is ignoring whenever 2 is happening it is not printing anything it is printing only in the else block whenever the condition is not true so pass uh, we will see the demonstration of pass as well you can find it similar to continue but actually pass uh, continue uh, is limited only to uh, conditions or loops but pass can be used in functions loops or it can be used in conditions or if blocks also so pass is a bit interesting it can be used overall every, everywhere even in functions so say i have uh, certain values uh, for i in range i'll take range of 1 to 20 and i will print so if i mod 5 equal to equal to 0 i will do pass if i do this and i am going to else in the else block i will just print i so what i am doing is i am just returning values whenever uh, it is not divisible by 5 okay so i am just passing like i am just not uh, uh, working out or i am not doing anything when i is divisible by 5 so if i want to ignore also then also we can use pass it is like none so if i am creating a variable none so if i run a so you can see nothing is happening this is what the pass is going to do pass is similar to none so none in, in the context of variables none is there and in the context of, of for loops or in the context in the context of loops conditions and functions pass can be used out now we will talk about nested for loop and uh, nested for loop is an important element of program why because uh, for loops uh, if you talk about for loops uh, we may have certain level of dependency over data okay the data can be nested within among within itself for example i have a list and inside the uh, inside my list i have an, i have another list within that inside list i have another list so if i want to iterate within the list and among the list I can use a nested for loop okay so whenever the data structure is arranged in a way that it has nested structure I can use a nested for loop for that so the syntax and the execution work like this for example I have a for loop I have outer for loop my my outer for loop will iterate over the outer data for example this is a list and inside my list I have certain other list say list 2 list 3 okay and inside this list i have values 1 2 and 3 and here i have values 4 5 and 6 i also have values 7 8 and 9 now when i talk about this numbers uh, you can see there are two ways of iteration like uh, this is a list with three lists within that list okay this is a nested list structure we will be discussing the nested list structure in detail later on but what we what we are trying to figure out here is i am trying to do a nested operation over this data structure list and you know that if i want to go for one it is not inside the outer list this is the outer list and this is the inner list one two and three so 
when i want to iterate over the outer uh, data or the outer list i am going to iterate over this this and this and if i want to iterate inside the first list so for, for loop will be needed for the internal list as well so for loop nested for loop we can use to iterate over the outer element or the outer skeleton of data and also the inner skeleton of the data so we'll try to understand it in a better way with the help of our uh, we have two programs basically i can i can discuss it with the help of two programs and uh, this is the first program that we will first discuss and one more with the help of a list so that a clarity of concept with respect to nested loop is there with you so nested list or nested loops okay first we will take the example that uh, that is there okay so i will use for i in range let's say 1 to 5 i am taking and i will print i you can see the value that i get that i am getting here is 1 2 3 4 but i want to iterate for j in i if i put j in i let's see what happens and instead of i i am printing j okay it is returning j in range of i okay see what happens and i will use a print statement over here to understand it better print okay so in the first iteration so i value is starting from 1 to 5 okay so i value initially i is 1 then i becomes 2 i becomes 3 and i becomes 4 when i'm talking about i becoming 1 there is just one value returning when i'm talking about i returning i being, I being 2 i'm getting two values why i am getting two values here now let's understand in detail so if we talk about um, this j if the i value is 1 j value in range of 1 we are talking about j value in range of 1 which means when i is 1 j can go till 1 okay because j is also iterating in a range of uh, 1 okay j value is uh, 1 which means here the first value will be 0 when i value is 2 j value j value will become j a will become in range of 0 uh, 2 0 to 2 0 to 2 means j value will hold a value 0 and 1 then when j bec i becomes 3 j can hold value now it can hold values 0 also 1 also and 2 also it will not go beyond that because because the extreme value of j is going to be i as i said j in range of i so right now my i is 3 so j can go from 0 to 3 only and then if i put i is equal to 4 so j can take value 0 1 2 and 3 it can take four values so in such instances we are able to see that a for loop a nested for loop is getting executed so initially i'm getting uh, one then i'm getting uh, two three and four as the values of i and j is also initially internally taking the values of i based on whatever is the value of i it will create a sequence so j is taking values from zero then it is taking zero to one then zero one two and zero one two three so nested loop basically helps us to create such kind of data or such kind of values or output we can uh, definitely put uh, values like here n is equal to i can put space here like this and you can see the values like this to get a systematic representation so initially i this is my i value so i is the length of this value so here i have i value is one so i'm seeing one output if i'm putting two two output 
i value is 3 therefore 3 output and 4 4 value and j is this j is 0 1 2 and 3 okay so j value these are my j values okay and these are my i values so i values are taking from 1 2 3 4 only but j value is taking initially in the first when i is equal to 1 j is only 0 when i is equal to 2 j is equal to 0 1 when i is equal to 3 j is equal to 0 1 2 and when i is equal to 4 0 is equal, uh, j is equal to 0 1 2 3 so this is the concept of nested loops this is how we can use we can print anything uh, in we, if you don't want to print j you can print uh, star as well like i can print star and sometimes such kind of questions can come to you in interview sometimes if you want to ch make changes you can put two times i so it will create a different structure like this and if you put two times i minus one it will give some other structure so these are certain set of questions which can come when you are doing pattern printing interview like in interviews they can ask you pattern printing questions and uh, this can definitely help or help you out in in case if you are working so if i'm talking about this condition so let's let's discuss this in a very uh, detailed way how and what kind of change we are seeing here so uh, if i consider i'll take the value of okay so i'll consider i and i'll consider the value of j okay and we'll talk about how many stars are getting printed so basically stars are uh, getting printed basis, basically uh, based on how many value what is the value of i and j so if i um, is equal to initially i starts from 1 so i will be 1 so if i is equal to 1 j value will start from j in range 2 into i minus 1 okay so j will go from 0 to 2 into i so 2 into i means 2 into 1 minus 1 which is 1 so j can go values from one only okay then in the second iteration i is equal to 2 so j will take values 2 into 2 minus 1 so 2 into 2 4 4 minus 1 which is 3 and when we talk about uh, i is equal to 3 so j will take 2 into 3 which is 6 minus 1 that is 5 when j is equal to 4 because uh, sorry i is equal to 4 i can go up till 4 only so i is equal to 4 j is equal to 8 minus 1 which is 9 and let's try to count how many stars are getting printed so we are printing j times star okay j times star for i in range 2 times 2 into i minus 1 so whatever is the value of j that many times stars will get printed so in the first iteration one star is getting printed second iteration three star is getting printed based on the j values uh, third uh, a third time we can see um, how many uh, five stars are getting printed and fourth time we are getting uh, nine stars so you have to decide how uh, how you want to uh, structure the value of j if you put three times i so entirely the structure will become different so i will just put three times i and entirely the structure so initially i is one so j value will be different so i will also try to um, show you how uh, how exactly this uh, works when three times i minus one is there so three times i so i is equal to let me write when i is equal to one so j value will now be how much we will discuss so three times one minus one which is two so two stars are waiting printed 3 times 2 minus 1 which is 3 to the 6, 6 minus 1, 5 times star will be getting printed. Then uh, 3 times 3 minus 1 which is 9 times stars will get printed. And 3 times 4 minus 1 which is 11 times uh, star will get printed. And accordingly you will see the count of stars. So whenever a problem of pattern printing comes, so J basically represents what you want to print. And I basically represent how many rows uh, you want to print. Okay. We can also replace J and I uh, instead of star I can just simply put J here and still it will give me the same uh, kind of values uh, you can see if I put here 2 and you can see the same set of values uh, different so whatever is the J value J the iteration will get printed. Now we are going to discuss about Python objects. 
Python objects are very important element when it, when we are doing or writing programs in Python. Because Python objects are the basic constructs which helps us to store the data in an efficient way. And without data, we cannot handle any program. So we require information data to handle such kind of programs. So Python objects helps us to kind of handle different types of data. So in this session, we are going to discuss. So we are going to discuss about Python collection objects such as strings, list, tuples, dictionary and list comprehension. So first of all, we will talk about Python collection objects. Python has a different set of objects which stores the data in a different way. We have discussed this earlier in the introductory part. We have certain uh, data types which are collection data types, which means it is not just a single data type. It has different combination of data or the atomic data. So Python collection objects are objects that can hold any number of arbitrary elements, which means it can have multiple values. Python collections or container object provides a way to access elements and iterate over these elements. So some of the important or some of the core Python collection objects are string, list, tuple and dictionary. These are essential elements of a Python uh, database or Python program. The first data type that we are going to discuss is about string. It is also uh, a derived, we call it as a, um, it is an atomic strings. Strings are the first data types when we talk about in Python, which is an iterable as well as a atomic data type. Why we are calling it an item, atomic data type? Because it is unit in structure as well as it is made up of multiple elements together. So it is an iterable as well as an atomic data type. We have discussed this in detail uh, in, in, a, in a very introductory way. What is a string? So string variables are variables that hold zero or more characters. Now, what are characters? Characters such as anything which has alphabets or spaces or uh, numbers in a form of string value, in a form of uh, double quotes. So that is a string variable. Now we will try to understand how we can create a string variable in Python. So the first collection object we are going to discuss is string and string as I said it is a collection of some alphabet it can be a collection of alphabet number uh, some special cases. So it is a collection of number, alphabet, uh, special cases and even white spaces. Okay. So string can has multiple set of values. So if I want to see the uh, size of the string, which means how many characters are there in the string, I can use the length function over this. Okay. I can use the length function and it is giving me 23 as the string size. What is this 23 basically representing? This 23 represents uh, the number of unit characters, unit elements inside this string. Okay, so Python, um, this string is um, is a combination of alphabets, numbers, uh, as well as special characters, as well as white spaces. Now, if I talk about this string, we can also use as it is an iterable. We can see it is a combination of multiple characters and letters and numbers together so it is also an iterable in nature that's why we can use a certain iterable component to uh, kind of we can use a certain iterable component to kind of access the information which is present inside this string so let us understand how we can do it so we are doing it with the help of indexing and slicing now when we talk about uh, any iterable data type or a collection data type it is having a unique feature of indexing and slicing so indexing is a process of referring an element of an iterable that is 
string, list, tuple, etc. by its position called as index. So uh, every element in an iterable is stored at an position. Okay. So based on that position, we can extract that information from that particular iterable. Iterable. Now we have slicing. Slicing is the process of getting a subset of that element. For example, if I am having a long string, so I don't want the entire string. I want the sub part of the string. So that is uh, done with the help of sli slicing. In order to retrieve an element of the list, we use index operator that is square bracket. Iterables are zero index. So if I am putting square bracket zero, it basically returns the element which is at the zeroth index. And if I put one, so it returns the second element and likewise. <coughs> Python basically allows you to index from the end of the list using a negative negative number as well. So we will try to see how this indexing works for a string. So you can see here we have a string which is written as text is equal to I love Python. Now if I want to extract the first element of a string, I can use text square bracket zero and it will give me the first alphabet of the string. I can use text and I can use the colon uh, operator to specify uh, I can use text and the colon operator in order to get a certain set of values if I want all the values I can use this colons like this and if I want up to a certain set of values so I can use colons and length of text we will try to understand and figure out what exactly this all is about with the help of a python program So if you see this string, a string uh, is having values python123 underscore 90 and a lot of different things are there in this um, string. What if I want to extract the first element, I can put s square packet 0, it is giving me the first element which is nothing but the first character of the string which is p. If I want to extract the first two uh, elements, so I can put 0 is 2 and it has given me the first two element if I want to extract first five I can put like this I have to specify say I if I don't want from first value if I want to uh, get the data from say second value or third value to the tenth value or the tenth character what is the third character to the tenth character so I can use three is to ten so it will give me the ten character so that is slicing slicing allows us to get the data if I don't put like this, if I put single colons, it will give me the all of the data. I can also have negative indexing if I want the last value. If I put minus one, you can see we are getting the empty quotes, which means the last element is actually an empty quotes. Okay, I will put some value over here. And now you can see the last element I am getting it as 0 because the last element is 0 whatever is the element I can get it so I can also use <coughs> S so if I am putting minus 1 is 2 it is giving me all the values ok and if I put minus 1 is 2 minus or So it is giving me all the list except the last value. So it is giving me all the element in this uh, string except the last element if I put it. So if I want, uh, if I put minus two, it will give me second last element, uh, everything except the last and the second last. So this is how we can uh, use a string and uh, um, we can index and access elements in a string using indexing option. Um, we can also reverse a string so suppose I want to reverse a string so I can we can use double colons minus one which helps us to reverse the entire string you can see it is getting reverse okay if I put here say four and it is giving me up to four all the values okay it is reversing the string and it is giving me values so we can definitely reverse the string also and get the values based on this indexing and slices slicing
सो वी ऑल्सो हैव सम स्पेशल फंक्शन इन पाइथन फॉर स्ट्रिंग एंड दिस फंक्शन हेल्प्स अस टू काइंड ऑफ वर्क इन एनी पाइथन प्रोग्राम फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी हैव रीप्लेस वी हैव अपर केस लोअर केस टाइटल we also have a join uh, as a function so let's try to understand each of this function and some additional function in this uh, string concept so suppose i have a string i'm reframing my string uh, saying that ai is the future of technology and if i'm talking about this string so if i want <coughs> if i want to work on this string so if i use s dot and after s dot i have to press tab you can see lot of different uh, functions are there you can see different uh, uh, different function like case fold and all so we will talk about some basic functions so for example if i talk about upper <coughs> if i use s dot upper the entire string is going to get converted to upper if i use s dot lower entire string will get converted to the lower case if i use capitalize let's see so it will uh, capitalize the string by considering the first uh, value as capital so these are different uh, string functions so we can have a lot of different functions here uh, ends with suppose i want to check with which value ends with so if i put ends with say u and it is saying false if i put y so it will give me yes it is true because the string is ending with y there are lot of functions basically which helps us to work on uh, string lot of different functions format format man find uh, is alpha is numeric we have kind of use is uh, alpha and numeric say if i want to see if my um, um, string is an alphabet or numeric so if i use is alpha it is saying false it is saying false because the string is a combination of alphabet as well as empty space so what i will do i will uh, use is alpha for the first element so first <coughs> i will use is alpha for the first element of the string and if i use it so the first element of the string is a which is an alphabet that is that's why it returns uh, true so these are very much helpful functions when we are using uh, this for processing natural language data if you want to uh, clean out textual information so in this case string is a very important uh, function which can definitely help us we can also use counts uh, here so if you want to count how many say a are there in my string so i can use count function it is saying 0 uh, let's see there is no uh, small a uh, then what i will use is i will use u and see how many us are there there are two us one is uh, both the us are in there in the future if i use capital a it will definitely give me the value it is 1 so based on the case also it is going to uh, tell us uh, what is uh, what kind of function is there or how many count of alphabets are there in this string s okay we can use s dot uh, different function replace and ends with is digit digital is is digit is identifier is lower is numeric all different kind of functions you can try it out uh, we will talk about replace and replace function we can use to say if i want to replace uh, the empty spaces from the string and i want to put a plus sign over there so i can replace the empty space and you can see empty spaces are replaced with plus sign if you want to use underscore you can use underscore so this basically helps us to kind of work on your string data and make it more cleaner it helps us to clean out your string information okay so sometimes you don't want to if, if you just want to remove all the underscores or uh, spaces in your string so you can do it you can simply run uh, this and there is no space now in my entire string all the space has been removed okay so these are some functions in string very interesting function i believe uh, there are a lot of different uh, 30 40 functions are there so you should try all the functions uh, if not at least 5 uh, to 10 functions to understand what kind of um, function is this and what how it works we can use split function i think we have used it earlier so if i use split function so everything um, in the string s will 
like it is splitting based on the empty space okay so wherever empty space is there it will just stop that particular thing as a single word and it will consider anything after that empty space uh, which is a literal as a new word so it can help you to kind of uh, find out only words from a string or if suppose in my string i have uh, some some separator or comma or something is there so i can just mention that separator over here so based on comma also it can definitely replace that data uh, say if this is a string and if i am creating a new string a is equal to python comma java comma angular so i'm just creating a string like this and if i use a dot split uh, in, instead of so s dot split i'm just removing it so this is s dot split if i use a dot split so it will not give me anything it will consider angular python java as a single unit uh, in a single list but what if i want this to be a first word second word and third word uh, separated by comma so i have to just put comma here and you can see based on comma it is separating out so whatever is the separator based on that separator your python will definitely uh, split up the textual information as a singular word and put it into a list so these are some uh, functions that we see in list or uh, sorry series these are some functions that we see into a string enjoyed the session don't forget to like subscribe and let us know what python topic you'd like us to cover next